Hi, and welcome to another episode of the First Year Experience Podcast. I'm Dr. Jose Saldivar, and joining me as always are my wonderful co-hosts, Nick Balderas and Mr. Jerry Galindo. And today, today we have um, some really special guests. Um, we thought it was really timely to have them to, to have them on and join us on the podcast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow our guests to introduce themselves and then give them some time to talk about uh, who they are and, and the organization that they represent. So um, Alexis, why don't you take it away first? Well, hi, everybody. My name is Alexis Ramirez. I am one of the fall 2020 student ambassadors for Battleground, Texas. A little to know about me, I'm also a student here at UTRGV. I'm majoring in psychology with a minor in ASL, and I graduate this summer, so I'm excited. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. Uh, hi guys, my name is Javier Villarreal. I am a political science major with a minor in communications going into pre-law and I'm graduating hopefully next year. And I am also a student ambassador for Battleground Texas here at UTRGV for the 2020 fall. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you, Javier, for joining us. So um, can one of you tell us what exactly is Battleground Texas? Well, Battleground Texas is a non it's a political committee that was founded by former campaign operator Jeremy Bird. Uh, our commitment is to get as many people registered. It doesn't matter who you're voting for. It's a nonpartisan organization. And we actually have registered 40,000, I think, new voters the, uh, this cycle. So we're really, really excited. And uh, yeah, this is what we do. Wow. 40,000. 40, that's, that's a lot. And so, so you all aren't limited just to the university. You guys you just you try to get as many registered voters as possible. Yes, we have uh, student ambassadors all around Texas coming from UT Arlington, UTSA, UT Dallas, all universities. So mo more likely we have two at each campus. So Javier and I are the UTRGV ambassadors, but with all the student ambassadors and everyone who works with Battleground Texas for this cycle, we've got 40,000 so far. Awesome. Nick, I know you had some questions for our guests. What are you, what are you, what are you dying to know? Um, I think it's what's like the big questions. I think this election year is kind of one of those years where it's, you know, a lot of things are going on, you know, with COVID, you know, there's, you know, Black Lives Matter, and there's all these things that are just going on in our nation that we all have like big questions. And I think one of the biggest questions is like voting in person or voting by mail and what's and i know both of them are very important and it's just a way to get the vote out but in your opinion uh where do you see voting by mail headed and do you think the idea of voter suppression or the idea that you know voting in person is a better option or an easier option for its account and you know the safety behind it and being being in person. So what are, what are your opinions on voting by mail? Personally, I wish we could have voted by mail because taking into consideration everything that's going on with COVID-19 and the Valley, especially how we're headed with the pandemic, it would be an easier option to vote by mail. But due to circumstances, we have to go in person, you know, but personally, I would like to vote by mail just to have safety and comfort that you know i'm not i'm safe and i'm not putting others at risk or others putting myself at risk especially like with those with low who are more at risk to getting covid especially i live with my grandma and my mom who's a cancer survivor and so forth so i do my best not to go out like only for heb circumstances but yeah yeah, I, it seems to be, um, I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a really important issue. And um, I think a, a lot of people are concerned. I know even with my own students, there are questions about, uh, is it, is it going to be safe and whether they feel safe or not? I know the university is going to have a, a polling location, so you'll be able to go and do early voting there. Yes. I, I, for one, I, I plan to take advantage of, of the early voting opportunity. And and I imagine since there aren't a lot of students on campus, it, it, it's probably going to be fairly safe and maybe a little quiet. Um, so I'm definitely going to take advantage of it. So, so thank you. Thank you all. Um, you know, 
just a little bit, you know, I, I, I have a little bit, a few more questions about just the battleground Texas and how exactly did you all get involved? I mean, did you all, would you consider yourselves politically active or, you know, is it only for those I know, like Javier, you said you're a political science major. Um, is it for students that, that find themselves or would identify themselves as politically active or, or can anyone apply? How does that work? I believe so, but we actually got a bunch of majors working with us. We got actually nursing, psychology. Um, so I think it's for everyone. As long as you have a strong willpower to cause change, I think you can apply it about around sexes. And I really, really, really do recommend it since working for an organization that can have such a big impact is just so moving. You know, like I really, really am thankful for working with Lover in Texas semester and to be part of change, even though it's not, how to say this, voting is not really hmm, something that will cause change immediately or something that causes change over time. But mm -hmm. still, it's change, you know, it's progression. So I'm really, really thankful for working for Lover in Texas semester. To add on to what Javier mentioned, I know when I applied to be a part of Battleground Texas, I was really nervous because like I'm a psychology major. I'm not poli sci, I'm not, you know, but I myself with everything that's going on, the Black Lives Matter movement, everything that's happened, especially with COVID, everything, I found it important to have at least spread the word and advocate for voting because it does matter. And so when I applied, I told our boss, Mando, I was like, Mando, I'm really scared of this interview. I'm not sure what you're looking for. I'm not, I'm not political, like in the sense of majoring in poli sci or a part of like SGA or stuff like that. So, yeah. but it was, he comforted me and he was like, as long as you have that willpower and strive to make change, especially in the Valley here, we have a low voter turnout. Yeah. I wanted to change, influence my friends and our community. And what would you say to someone that like is kind of, you know, taking a back seat to the whole voting process? I know a couple of people that are just like, you know, I don't want to bother voting right now. It's just something that I don't want to be engaged in because I know it's, my vote doesn't matter. I know my vote is just like, and it's like Javier said, it's, it's something that's going to take a long time for things to change. So I'm just going to just stay out of it. So what, what would you kind of say to someone like that? I've been telling people about that is that we have to think on the big picture. What is at stake on this election? Well, first of all, immigrants, DACA, gay rights, what else, uh, women's rights. Like, if you're not interested in politics, that's fine. But think about the other people. Because by not being interested in politics, and this is my personal opinion, you're showing some kind of privilege, if that makes sense because you're not getting involved, because you're not, you don't have anything personally to lose on this election. There's many, many people, friends that I know, family that I know, who actually have a lot to lose on this election. So to people who are not thinking about getting involved in this election, I would tell them, hey, think about the big picture. You're gonna hurt a lot of people by not voting. And I think I think you're like kind of right on point with that because um, I, that's the thing that I've kind of shared with my friends or the people that I know that don't want to vote. And I tell them taking that back seat is is kind of affecting the other people that are really working hard. And let's just say I I know your organization's nonpartisan, but it, you know left or right, and voting for that person and them saying oh I think it's just corrupt. It's just something I want to stay out of, but. In reality, you're not really voting for that one candidate. You're voting for all the people that are doing that work. It's not just the one Democrat or the one Republican. It's all the other people on the ground and grassroots organizations that are actually doing that work. And I think your organization is one of those organizations that's really just trying to like rally people together. Yeah, I think a lot of people are very close minded in the sense of voting like, oh, my voice doesn't matter. It's not going to affect me, but like. Like both of you said, in the long run, it is going to affect you. It not only affects 
an individual person, but Texas, the community, and the nation. It's just, I don't know, people need to realize that. And we're trying our best to make people realize that. Yeah, you know, um, you know, what one thing that I would... I was thinking about like, you know, a big question, what, you know, what's my next question for the, for the guests, but, but just getting back to that question about how do you convince people and, and encouraging people to vote. Um, and, and I, I think a lot of us immediately, we think, right, my vote, my vote, do, vote doesn't matter. It does take time, right. To see change happen. Um, I think sometimes we overlook a lot of the local elections and the small elections. And so like, I'm, I'm from a small community you know, population like 5,000, 5,500 or something. And I was a school board member and I was a school board president. So I saw, like, I, I've seen school board elections, won or lost with like 30 votes and less. Um, and those decisions, like, like we always lose sight of those, but they're, you know, if you drive around South Texas, you drive around the Rio Grande Valley, you see the billboards and you see the placards for school board and for county commissioners and for state reps and there are so many races and, and I think sometimes it's easy for us to say like with the presidential race, I'm so removed from it. A lot of the decisions, like it takes forever for those policies to affect me. Although I think we've learned, I think at least we've seen ex uh, examples of that this, these last four years where some of those policies have immediate effects. If you look at the pandemic and things, but Certainly for like local elections, I think we, we forget about those. And so if you look at like a school district, in most of the Rio Grande Valley, the school districts are the largest employers. And so you're talking about people's jobs and people's livelihoods. You're talking about, you know, education and, and like right now, how, how everybody's getting educated right online and what are we doing about that and the safety of teachers. And so I feel like, like we're at this watershed moment where now like there's too many examples of us for us to say, we were, we can't say it doesn't affect me. Like, I think you can point to so many things and say, no, it affects you here and it affects you there. And, and like, I feel like we're out of excuses at this point. Yeah. For sure. So what else do you all have any, um, Nick, Jerry, you all have any other questions for our guests? I, I feel like this is such a rich topic. Like, we, like, like our conversation should just be bursting out. Like, where do we, it's where do we go? National Voter Registration Week. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. The other, the other day was like National Voter Registration Day, right? Yes. It's, okay. I'm so, so Alexis, so, you know, I, I think a lot of people don't understand the process. When's the last day? Like if I wasn't a registered voter, um, but I am so my voter registration card. Um, when would be the last day to get registered in Texas? In Texas, it's October 5th. So we're on a crunch time already. And especially since with Battleground Texas, we mail out voter applications to the person. And that takes five to seven business days. And then for the person to actually like fill it out and mail it back to their county's election office, it takes a while, right? So we're on crunch time trying to make it before October 5th. Wow. Okay. That's, that's good to know. Is there any other resources that they may have for, to maybe do it online? Or I know vote.org was one of those resources where you can check if you're registered. So with Battleground Texas, we have a link as well to check if you're registered to vote. I think it's through vote.org. And then if they're not, then we have, we have three links. So to check your registration and then to request a voter application through mail and then to get committed to vote. So it gives you updates on polling locations, volunteer opportunities, and so forth. Awesome, thank you. Well, I, I think we will be able to, I, you know, our, our goal is to post the, the podcast on, on Monday, but I think we can certainly put our links and share the links with, with our listeners and with all of our, our community before then, so that if they have, if they wanna try and get registered before then, I think we should, we should all do our part, right? And try to get everybody, as many people registered as possible. Yes, yeah. thank you so much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think the Valley is one of those low areas that, the Valley is one of those areas that has really low voter turnout. Um, what would you say ab about the state of Texas? Like what's the voter turnout for the entire state? So I'm actually doing a research project on this matter. 
for the Latino community in specific. Here in the Valley, as Alexis said, and as we know, it's a, a community that does not vote. But we have to think about all the variables that go into this, which is maybe immigration status. Maybe they can be residents and they cannot vote. And what else? Uh, our culture. Our Hispanic culture mostly relies on being conservative. You know, if the young people vote, it's the devil's work, you know? That's what we, my mom thinks, actually. And what else? Maybe they do not have the resources and they do not have the proper information. They do not know who to vote for or why they're even voting for. So I think here for the Latino community in specific, that's a big, big, big factor for not voting. And as of Texas, I believe that what is affecting the lower turnout in Texas is voter suppression to a certain extent. And it has also to deal, I think, with uh, how many immigrants there is here in Texas, which goes back to the same thing that I said earlier, that most of these folks are maybe residents and therefore they cannot get registered, they cannot vote, and it affects the process. And I think that it has to deal with, again, with suppression by a, a expensive and long immigrational uh, process. Yeah, because I think it's what, one in three are Latino voters. I mean, throughout the United States, it's like one in three people. And it's like that kind of power that like, that kind of power Latinos have you know, throughout the United States. And it's just getting those people to like come forward and just, you know, cast your vote, you know. And I think, um, yeah, voter suppression is like one of those big issues. And I think they're gonna be potential for closing certain voting sites. There's potential for, for like dismantling, if there is vote by mail, dismantling the post offices machines, the machines that they have at the post office. So it's kind of a very complicated topic. Um, I guess like now that we're coming to now that we're coming to like a close on being able to register, I think like now is the time for people just to like come forward, sign up and get themselves situated because, you know, November 3rd is coming up and it's not that far away. It's less, it's about a month, about 39 days. Yeah. yeah. I think now closer to the date people it's you get registered or not. If, you don't you lose your chance and that's something we don't want we want everyone's voice to be heard but it just depends on how the today sorry someone must take the initiative mm -hmm. to register to vote yeah absolutely absolutely um are there any other is there anything else you'd love to tell you know listeners and just people out there um you know to to get that message out just to encourage them to vote is there anything else you want to leave our listeners with I'd like to mention it's important to do your research on your candidates to construct your own research and realize and understand what they stand for and what they represent mm -hmm. because it's like how we mentioned throughout this whole podcast it's not only affecting you it's going to affect your neighbors your community your friends your family texas and the nation so do your research and please register to vote <laughs> Javier, do you have anything for our listeners? Yes, I'd like to say that voting does not, think, does not change things overnight. Nonetheless, we have to vote and we have to keep our candidates in check. They work for us and it is our White House, it's not theirs. So it is our civic duty to go out there and vote. It's our mission actually. And uh, there is not much to say just go out there, think about others and what this election conveys for everyone, yeah. not just you. Awesome, thank you, thank you. Jerry, you wanna add anything or do you have any questions for our group? No, I feel like this is um, just, as someone who's been registered since I was legally able to be registered, it still scares me that people aren't registered to vote. So um, I just say, you know, take the political, like take the, what I've what I always said to people is like, I, I'm not telling you who to vote for. I'm not telling you what, what party to vote for. 
if you're a Republican and that works for you and you were voting for the Republican candidate, that is 100% okay. Um, I just want you to go out there and make your voice heard. Um, I think the low voter turnout of younger people is sad because honestly, like, it's not up to the 80 year olds that live in their mobile homes that are going to be running this country. It's up to our future children, our future generations. So um, there's not much to ask other than please like go out there, register, um, vote in the way that you feel is comfortable. Early voting is the safest and easiest way to vote in my personal opinion. So um, just get out there to those voting polls, um, hopefully, and um, we can hopefully have a better tomorrow. Nick, you want to add anything? Um, yeah, the same thing that Jerry's been saying that said, or everyone else that's been the same thing everyone else is talking about. I think at UTRGV, we're going to have our own polling site. And like Jerry said, early voting is probably the safest route and coming into the uh, to the university, you know, they're going to be taking extra precautions because of COVID. They're going to be sanitizing everything on the regular. So I think you know, getting your vote in as soon as possible to avoid the lines is the best bet for anybody to stay safe. Awesome. Awesome. Um, well, thank you all. I don't know if there's anything else, but really. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, like please. Add, early voting is from October 13th through the 30th. Awesome. Okay. October 13th through the 30th. So that's a, that's a nice big window for everybody to get out there and vote. Right. And then, yes. Yeah. And, and, to Nick's point, I think, yeah, get, take advantage of, of early voting. Um, for our listeners out there, if you're eligible to vote, if you're registered to vote, please get out there, take advantage of early voting. Um, when the crowds aren't as, as busy as, as, that, as election day, we all know, we see the lines on election day, try and avoid that, get out there and, and make your voice heard. Um, and, and yeah, so, and if you're not registered, we'll, we'll share our links, share the links to Battleground Texas and to, to their information so that you can check to see if you're registered and then how you might get registered to vote. And hopefully I'll do it before the October 5th uh, deadline. So with that, thank you all again. Thank you to, to our guests for joining us on the FYE podcast. It was a pleasure having you all. Best of luck um, getting folks registered and, uh, and we'll, we'll be seeing everybody soon. So bye-bye, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.